1964 Reconnaissance Strike Aircraft Prototype Model by British Aircraft Corporation The British Aircraft Corporation TSR-2 is a cancelled Cold War strike and reconnaissance aircraft developed by the British Aircraft Corporation for the Royal Air Force in the late 1950s and early 1960s. The introduction of the first jet engines in the late World War II period led to calls for new jet-powered versions of practically every aircraft then flying. The Mosquito had been designed with the express intent of reducing the weight of the aircraft in order to improve its speed as much as possible. SAMs had speed and altitude performance much greater than any contemporary aircraft. The Canberra and other high-altitude aircraft like the British V bombers or United States Boeing B-52 Stratofortress were extremely vulnerable to these weapons. The first aircraft to fall victim to the Soviet S-75 Davina SAM was a Taiwanese RB-57, a US reconnaissance version of the Canberra, shot down in 1959. The solution was to fly lower. Since radar operates in line of sight, the curvature of the Earth renders low-flying aircraft invisible beyond a certain range, the radar horizon. Low-level strike aircraft, or interdictors, grew into a new class of their own during the late 1950s. These early studies eventually settled on an aircraft with a 2000 NMI ferry range, Mach 1.5 speed, at altitude, and 600 NMI low-level range. The requirements were eventually made official in November 1956 with General Operational Requirement 339, which was issued to various aircraft manufacturers in March 1957. The latter requirement was a side effect of common battle plans from the 1950s, which suggested that nuclear strikes in the opening stages of war would damage most runways and airfields, meaning that aircraft would need to take off from rough fields, such as disused Second World War airfields, or even sufficiently flat and open areas of land. In addition to the argument over the need for manned aircraft, additional political machinations had the effect of complicating the project. The savings involved in both forces using a common aircraft would be considerable, and Blackburn offered the RAF a version of the Na.39 to fit some of the Gore.339 requirements. As one RAF official put it, if we show the slightest interest in Na.39 we might not get the Gore.339 aircraft. The ministry was particularly impressed with the Vickers submission, which included not only the aircraft design, but a total systems concept, outlining all the avionics, support facilities and logistics needed to maintain the aircraft in the field. Aircraft speed at release between M0.92 and 1.10. These targets comprised missile sites, both hardened and soft, aircraft on airfields, runways, airfield buildings, airfield fuel installations and bomb stores, tank concentrations, ammunition and supply dumps, railways and railway tunnels, and bridges. Throughout 1959, English Electric and Vickers worked on combining the best of both designs in order to put forward a joint design with a view to having an aircraft flying by 1963, while also working on merging the companies under the umbrella of the British Aircraft Corporation. In effect, the aircraft would be built 50-50, Vickers the front half, EE the rear. The wing loading was high for its time, enabling the aircraft to fly at very high speed and low level with great stability without being constantly upset by thermals and other ground-related weather phenomena. The aircraft featured some extremely sophisticated avionics for navigation and mission delivery, which would also prove to be one of the reasons for the spiraling costs of the project. Such as forward-looking radar and side-looking radar for navigational fixing, only became commonplace on military aircraft years later. The overall outlay of funds made it the largest aircraft project in Britain to date. The choice of proceeding to production tooling turned out to be another source of delay, with the first aircraft having to adhere to strict production standards or deal with the bureaucracy of attaining concessions to allow them to exhibit differences from later airframes. Despite the increasing costs the first two of the development batch aircraft were completed. In the days leading up to the testing, Dennis Healy, the opposition shadow secretary for defense, had criticized the aircraft saying that by the time it was introduced it would face new anti-aircraft missiles that would shoot it down making it prohibitively expensive at 16 million pounds per aircraft. During the flight, the aircraft achieved Mach 1 on dry power only. Most of the complex electronics were not fitted to the first aircraft, so these flights were all concerned with the basic flying qualities of the aircraft which, according to the test pilots involved, were outstanding. Costs continued to rise, which led to concerns at both company and government upper management levels, and the aircraft was also falling short of many of the requirements laid out in OR.343, such as takeoff distance and combat radius. At two cabinet meetings held on 1 April 1965, it was decided to cancel the TSR-2 on the grounds of projected cost, 
and instead to obtain an option agreement to acquire up to 110 F-111 aircraft with no immediate commitment to buy. The maiden flight of the second development batch aircraft, XR-220, was due on the day of the announcement, but following an accident in conveying the airframe to Boscombe down, coupled with the announcement of the project cancellation, it never happened. Aeronautical engineer and designer of the Hawker Hurricane Sir Sidney Cam said of the TSR-2, All modern aircraft have four dimensions, span, length, height and politics. TSR-2 simply got the first three right. Following the 1966 Defense White Paper, the Air Ministry decided on two aircraft, the F-111K, with a longer-term replacement being a joint Anglo-French project for a variable geometry strike aircraft, the Anglo-French variable geometry aircraft. These were the same aircraft that the RAF had derided in order to get the TSR-2 go ahead, but the Buccaneer proved capable and remained in service until 1994. The TSR-2 tooling, jigs and many of the part-completed aircraft were all scrapped at Brooklands within six months of the cancellation. Four further airframe serials XR-228 to XR-231 were allocated but these aircraft were allegedly not built. Construction of a further 10 aircraft allocated serials XS-660 to 669 was started but all partly built airframes were again scrapped by RJ Coley. The last serial of that batch, XS-670 is listed as cancelled, as are those of another batch of 50 projected aircraft, XS-944 to 995.